ಕುಂಜ ಜಯ ಗೋಪಿ ಜನ್ಮಲ್ಲಿರಿವರ ಜಯ ಗೋಪಿ ಜನ್ಮಲ್ಲಿರಿವರ ಜಯ ರಾಜವಿಹಾರಿ ಜಯ ಗೋಪಿ ಜನ ಗಿರಿವಾಧಾರಿ ಯಶೋದಾನಂದನ ಪ್ರಜನ ರಂಜನ ಯಶೋದಾನಂದನ ಪ್ರಜನ ರಂಜನ ಯಮೋನತೀರ ಜಯ ರಾಧ ಮಾಧವ ಕುಂಜ ವಿಹಾರಿ ಜಯ ರಾಧಯ ರಾಧ ಮಾಧವ ಕುಂಜ ವಿಹಾರಿ ಹರೇ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಹರೇ ಕೃಷ್ಣ 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 ಹರೇ ಹರೆ ಹರೇ ರಾಮ ಹರೇ ರಾಮ 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 ಹರೇ ಹರೇ ಹರೆ ಹರೆ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಹರೆ ಕೃಷ್ಣ 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 ಹರೆ 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 ರಾಮ ಹರೆ ರಾಮ 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 ಹರೆ 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 ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಹರೆ ಹರೆ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಹರೆ ಕೃಷ್ಣ 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 ಹರೆ 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 ರಾಮ ಹರೆ ರಾಮ 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 ಹರೆ ಹರೆ ಹೇ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಹರೆ ಕೃಷ್ಣ 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 ಹರೆ ಹರೆ ಹೇ ರಾಮ ಹರೆ ರಾಮ 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 ಹರೆ ಹರೆ ಹೇ 
Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Ram Ram, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare, Hare Krishna. Jai Jai Radha Vrindavan Chandra Radha Vrindavan Chandra Radhe Vrindavan Chandra Vrindavan Chandra Jai Jai Gannath Jai Jai Gannath Jai Bala Deva Jai Subhadra Jaya Gauranitai, 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 Jaya Gauranitai. Jaya Prabhupad, 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 Jaya Jaya. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Narayanam Namaskritya Naram Chaiva Narottamam Devim Saraswati Vyasam Tato Jayamudirayet Nascha Praesha Badreshu Nityam Bhagavata Sevaya Bhagavati Uttama Shloke Bhaktir Bhavati Naishtiki Reading from Srimad Bhagavatam Canto 6, Chapter 5, Text Number 23 Nasham Nishamya Putranam Naradat Sheila Shalinam Anavatapyata Kaha Sochan Suprajastam Chaucham Padam Nasham Nisham Yaputranam Nasham Nisham Yaputranam Narada Chila Shalina Narada Chila Shalina Anavata Pyataka Shochan Anavata Pyataka Shochan Suprajastam Shaujampadam 
Suprajastam Sujampadam Nasham Nisham Yaputranam Nasham Nisham Yaputranam Narada Chila Shalinam Narada Chila Shalinam Anavata Pyadaka Shocham Anvada Pyadaka Shocham Suprajastam Sucham Suprajastam Sucham Badam Asham Nisham Yabutranam Taradashila Shalinam Anmatap Yadaka Shochan Suprajastam Sucham Padam Asham Nisham Yabutranam Arada Shila Shalinam Anmatap Yadaka Shochan Suprajastam Sucham Padam Asham Nisham Yabutranam Aradama Chila Shalinam Anvada Pyadaka Shochan Suprajastam Sucham Pradam Word to word meaning Nasham, the loss, Nishamya, hearing of, Putranam, of his sons, Narada, from Narada, Shila Shalinam, who are the best of well behaved persons, Anvatapyata, suffered, Kaha, Prajapati Daksha, Chochan, lamenting, Suprajastvam, having 10,000 well-behaved sons. Shauchan, of lamentation, Padam, position. Translation and purport by Divine Grace, A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami, Srila Prabhupada. Srila Prabhupada ki jai. The Harya Shavas, the sons of Prajapati Daksha, were very well behaved, cultured sons, but unfortunately, because of the instructions of Narad Muni, they deviated from the order of their father. When Daksha heard this news, which was brought to him by Narad Muni, he began, began to lament. Although he was the father of such good sons, he had lost all them all. Certainly, this was lamentable. Purport. The Haryashavas, the sons of Prajapati Daksha, were certainly well behaved, learned and advanced. In accordance to the order of their father, they went to perform austerities to beg good sons for their family. But Narada took advantage of their good behavior and culture to properly direct them not to be involved with the material world but to use their culture and knowledge to end their material affairs. The Harisha was abided by the order of Narada Muni. But when the news of this was brought to Prajapati Daksha, the Prajapati, instead of being happy with the actions of Narada Muni, was extremely sorrowful. Similarly, we are trying to bring as many young men as possible to the Krishna consciousness movement for the ultimate benefit. But the parents of the young men joining this movement, being very sorry, are lamenting and making counter-propaganda 
Of course, Prajapati Daksha did not make propaganda <laughs> against Narad Muni. But later, as we shall see, Daksha cursed Narad Muni for his benevolent activities. This is a way of materialistic life. A materialistic father and mother want to engage their sons in begetting children, striving for improved economic condition and rotting in materialistic life, but are not unhappy when their children become spoilt, useless citizens, but they lament when they join the Krishna consciousness movement to achieve the ultimate goal of life. This animosity between parents and the Krishna consciousness movement has existed since time immemorial. <laughs> Even Narad Muni was condemned not to speak of others. Nevertheless, Narad Muni never gives up his mission to deliver as many fallen souls as possible. He continues playing this musical instrument and vibrating the transcendental sound Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Ram Ram, Hare Hare. Whatever words. Om Gyanadi Vidandasya Gyananjana Shalakaya Chakshurun Militam Yena Tasmai Shri Gurave Shri Chaitanya Mano Bishtam Stampitam Yena Bhutale Swayam Rupa Kadamayam Dadati Swa Padantikam Pandeham Shri Guru Shri Utapada Kamalam Shri Gurun Maishnavam Scham Shri Rupam Sakrajatam Sahagana Ragunatan Mitam Tam Sajivam Sadvaitam Savadutam Parijana Sahitam Krishna Chaitanya Devam Shri Radha Krishna Padan Sagana Litash Vishakan Vitam Scham He Krishna Karuna Sindho Dina Bando Jagatpate Gopesh Gopika Kanta Radha Kanta Namastute Tapta Kalanchana Gaurangi Radhe Vrindavaneshwari Prishabhano Sute Devi Pranamami Haripriye Vancha Kalpatarubhyascha Kripa Sindhubhya Evacha Patitaram Pavanebhyo Vaishtavebhyo Namo Namaha Jaya Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhunityananda Shri Advaita Gadhadhar Shiva Sadi Gaura Bhakta Vrinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare 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 Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare 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 Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama, Hare Rama, Ram Ram, Hare Hare. Please don't move. No problem. 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 So, these are very interesting words. Srila Prabhupada is a Acharya who actually exactly followed the footsteps of Narad Muni. This kind of uh, revolution to get many young boys to join the Krishna consciousness movement has never been done by any previous Acharyas. If you see Madhvacharya, he had about 9 or 10 main, main sannyasi disciples. They are all young. And uh, if you see Ramanuja Acharya, he had many sannyasis, but most of them were quite elderly. But getting young boys at the age of, uh, say, between 18 to 24, maybe 20 to 24, to join the movement or give up material life, given family life, that has not been done before by anyone. Of course, there were some uh, Mayavadi uh, sannyasis who did it before Srila Prabhupada, but it was not in a mass scale around the world, even around India. They had their one mutt somewhere in Rishikesh, and uh, young boys would come and just stay there as sannyasis, maybe 50 or 100 of them. It is not that every place you have people coming and joining, and there's a matha, there's there, there are young boys who are who give up their parents and then just join. 
that kind of thing has never been there. So what Narad Muni did uh, many millions of years back, it was uh, copied by Srila Prabhupada, manifested by Srila Prabhupada uh, after so many, so many years, exactly this prasanga of converting wholesale, wholesale Brahmachari Ashram, 10,000 at one shot. Huh? Just imagine, Pune is known for its youth preaching to a factory of uh, making brahmacharis. So, what was manifested by Narada after many millions of years back, Prabhupada manifested during his time. And after Prabhupada, Pune manifested it. <laughs> Isn't it? It is not there. After Prabhupada, it was not so much. A few people joining here and there. But uh, in a mass scale, so many, uh, hundreds of them. Narada is Narada, so he could uh, do 10,000 at one go. Just imagine you go to a college program and give one class. <laughs> and all those, those who attended just come to the temple. <laughs> so that shows the potency of Narada. We do so much. Uh, so much of follow-up, base. And now we have... Uh, so much of hope on these boys will join and all of a sudden you find that they are not there. <laughs> so all these things, but Narada, just one lecture, he just asked them 10 questions. Rather, we give a lecture for one hour, maybe sometimes two hours and ask them any questions, nobody will ask any question. <laughs> they are all blank. You are very confused, you know whether he understood or not understood. Narada, he asked them 10 questions. Do you know them? If you don't know, what is the use of your life? And these uh, questions were very enigmatic. It is a principle that if you are not able to convince, confuse. <laughs> because until somebody is confused, you cannot give knowledge. So, somebody who is very thinking that I know, then it is very difficult to convince him. So, first you have to confuse. So, Narada is very good in confusing people. So, he asked these 10 enigmatic questions. You all done those two questions, so I will not talk much about it. But after answering all these questions, from 11th verse till the 20th verse, Narada, <clears throat> he tells, because there was an argument which was there within them. The argument was that, hmm, how can he to go to uh, Narayana Sarovara? We know this Narayana Sarovara is on the border of Pakistan in Kutch. If you go to Kutch, from, um, uh, from Kutch, you have the capital of Kutch is Buj. From there you go two and a half hours towards uh, Pakistan. There in the border, you have this Narayana Sarovara. Once upon a time, river Saraswati was manifest. Now that flows under the sand in the ground of Kutch and then meets the ocean there. So there you have a nice wonderful Sarovar which is Narayana Sarovar. Very interesting to know that conversation between Narada and uh, the Haryashavas happened in uh, Narayana Sarovar and Kapil Devuti Samvad happened on the bank of Bindu Sarovar. That is also was on the bank of river Saraswati. That is also in Gujarat, north of Ahmedabad. It is also in Gujarat. So both these conversations happened in this in Gujarat. So there are five sarovaras which are very are, are known as Krishna's own form. Bindu Sarovara, Narayan Sarovara, then you have Pushkara in Rajasthan, then you have Pampa Sarovara in Karnataka, you have Hampi near Hampi, Pampa Sarovara. Other is Manas Sarovar, that is there in in China occupied Tibet. <laughs> so these are the five sarovaras which are non different from Krishna. So Narada, he went there, his own mercy, and there uh, he converted them. And after answering all these things, they are very good people. That like this this verse says. So this verse says that they were Nasham Nisham Yaputrana Narada Chi Shila Shalinam. Shila Shalinam. So, in, they all understood. 
that what Narada is telling. The enigmatic words when he answered them, they were just one one words for each point. Uh, what is that hole? Man's going there, never returns. Narada explained to them. Immediately they could understand. They were very intelligent. Shivala Shal. But intelligence, they were convinced. But the problem was the goodness. Because the goodness, even though they are convinced this life is useless, material life is useless. Now, what is the point in getting married and then producing children, constructing the house and doing all these things? What is the use of it? It's all nonsense. So they were totally convinced about it. But one thing was problem for them. What is the one thing? Their goodness was the problem. Sheila Shalinam, their goodness was the problem. Like we also experience in our youth preaching programs, even, any, even congregation preaching programs also, that youth, they are convinced. One DYS is enough to convince. The three days DYS program, it is enough to convince every boy that no, it's all nonsense what we are doing. This education, this getting married, all oh, these all nonsense. But one thing, very difficult for them. Very difficult to give up. You know what is that? That is their goodness. Like Arjuna, he was speaking so many wonderful things. Five reasons he gave why I don't want to fight. And if you see those five reasons, they are all so wonderful reasons. The first reason itself is how can I kill my own relatives? Like here also, in the mind of the sons of Daksha, how can we disobey the orders of our spiritual master, of our, of our father, who is actually kind of a spiritual master because he is a person who gives uh, Gayatri to us, Upanayana, Sanskars to us. So, this goodness is a problem. Dharma is a problem. Uh, Arjuna was speaking Dharma. He was saying, Krishna, I am not interested in economic uh, benefit. I am not interested in the Niti Shastras and Artha Shastras. I am a superior person now. I am a Dharmika. Then Krishna told Arjuna in the very first verse, which he spoke in the, in the second chapter as Bhagavad Gita, as an instruction. Asocha anusha chastam pragyadam shabhansase gatasuna gatasumsha nanusho chanti pandita. In that, he clearly says, Arjuna, you are a fool because you are religious. Religiosity means foolishness. Goodness means foolishness. How can you say goodness is foolishness? Because goodness will not allow you to accept the truth. That is the problem with the goodness. Though Sattvam Sanjayate Gyanam, somehow the goodness covers, for, for, covers your intelligence from accepting the truth. You know, at the same time, don't know. Uh, that is why when you are convinced a boy that Krishna consciousness is the right path, you surrender, he says, yes. Then he says the word, but. But, I am Prabhu, I am fallen. Ah, this is the problem. <laughs> I am very fallen Prabhu, I am not qualified. That's what the young boy says, isn't it? When you tell them, why don't you join? They say, well, probably I am not qualified to join. Then you ask them, are you qualified to become a grahastha? Then probably, <laughs> then you feel shy. <laughs> no, probably that is a disqualification. Huh? So, when you are not even qualified to be a brahmachari, then how can you be qualified to be a grahastha? It's not easy to be a grahastha. It's more, it's a senior ashram, isn't it? When you are not qualified to... For 10th standard, how can we qualify for 12th standard? <laughs> then probably I require some time. <laughs> so, Sheila Shalinam is the problem. Uh, the problem for both. The for problem for the father also. The problem for the preachers of Krishna consciousness. Those who are following the fruits of Narada also. It's a big problem. Goodness is a big problem. Very difficult to understand how goodness can be a problem. Uh, only those who are preaching to cultured boys, they know how goodness can be a big problem. And those who are uh, preaching to uh, pious householders, you, they know how goodness can be a big problem. 
If you ask them to surrender to Krishna, come and worship, they say, you know, we got so many vratas to do. <laughs> so, in that to do. <laughs> very good. Now, they give you all dakshana, all these things. Very good. So, Sila Shalinam is a problem. That, uh, for both. So, that is what? Daksha is understanding or experiencing. Sheila Shalinam is a problem. My children are very good. That is my problem. And at the same time, this goodness is also a problem for the preachers of Krishna consciousness because this goodness doesn't allow them to really accept the truth in spite of knowing the truth. One is knowing, other is accepting. Just knowing is not enough, you have to accept it. So, by our logic and intelligence, we can defeat a person and then establish that Krishna consciousness Surrender to Krishna is the only goal of life. And that is the only thing to be done immediately. Surrender to Krishna. Don't get into material life. So, the boys are convinced about it. But the goodness holds them. Actually, if you see, the first thing which happened, first incident happened in the creation of this universe, uh, in the Visarga, Sarga, Visarga, Brahma. So, first thing happened is what? not obeying the orders of the father. From the mind of Brahma, the four Kumaras manifested. Brahma told them the same thing what Daksha told to his sons. Peta, achcha padai karo, tapasya karo, kash to thau, achcha number milega, naukri milega, you will get a, when you get a good naukri, then you will get a good salary, when you have a good salary, then you will get a good wife. Ultimately, everything boils down to that. So, all the goodness which the parents give to the children is with the aim of rajas. So, goodness is no goodness. Like a mother would discipline the child. No, no, no. Sit straight, properly. Uh, don't misbehave. Don't tell lies. Tell truth. All these things. No, don't watch TV. Study nicely. So, such nice training of goodness. Then, if you are an intelligent child, you ask the mother, my dear mother, my dear father, why are you telling me all these good things? Beta, if you do, if you are a very good person and if you study very nicely, then you will get a, get good marks. Then you ask, why, why should I get good marks? Tell me. See, if you don't get good marks, you will not get admission to a good college. Then my dear father, why I should get admission to the good college? Tell me. Father says, if you don't get admission in good college, then you will not get a good job. So you tell me why, why I should get a good job. Then the father says, if you don't get a good job, you will not get a good salary. Then why I should get a good salary, tell me my dear father. See, if you don't get a good salary, who will get married to you? <laughs> the whole life training of all the goodness, good instructions, just land up into one thing. <laughs> And this young boy, seven, eight year old boy, he has no idea what is his marriage all about. <laughs> if at all he has an idea, there is only one idea that how his parents are fighting, that's all. <laughs> He's confused. <laughs> so, <clears throat> the problem with the goodness is very difficult to identify because it seems to be spiritual but not. The word Sheila Shalinam is a very important word in this particular section. The problem, if somebody is able to identify problem in goodness, uh, is able to identify that uh, religiosity is ignorance. Uh, that itself, that proves that you understood 80% of Bhagavad Gita. If you are able, able to understand that religiosity is ignorance, hmm. because Arjuna was speaking all wonderful things, religious things, but Krishna told, Danu Sochanti Pandita, you are a fool, you are, ignor you are in ignorance. Religiosity is ignorance. That is where, that is the point which actually Krishna wants in the Bhagavad Gita. And that is where Bhagavatam starts. Dharma projita kaita bhotra paramo. Dharma is ignorance. Uh, dharma artha ka moksha. All the four are, uh, four aspects of ignorance. How do you know this thing? How we are explicitly able to tell this thing? No other Vaishnava Sampradaya also explicitly talks that Dharma, Artha, Ka, Moksha are ignorance. It is only in the Gaudiya line we explicitly speak, boldly speak. Because 
in the very beginning of Chaitanya Charitamrita, Sri Chaitanya Nityanando Saudito, Gaudo de Pushpunto Chitrosando, Tamonudo. Chaitanya Nityananda appeared to remove ignorance. Tamonudo. Uh, Sri Chaitanya Nityanando Saudito, Gaudo de. They appeared like the moon. Sachigarbha Sindhu Harindu to deliver the whole, whole world in the darkness of ignorance. And what is that ignorance? That is Dharma Artha Kamoksha. Krishna Skiviraj Goswami himself says this. The word Tama means Dharma Artha Kamoksha and he quotes Dharma Projita Gaita Bhotra Paramo. So Dharma Artha Kamoksha, these four are considered to be ignorance. Uh, boldly in the very beginning itself, in the beginning of the Bhagatam itself. So goodness uh, from which Dharma springs out and uh, of course, Artha, Kama, Moksha, all these things springs out from the from goodness. Srila Shalinam, that is a problem. And now, if somebody identifies it as a problem, then he has practically conquered the modes of nature. Practically conquered the modes of nature. So, coming back to the point here. So, what happened is, Narada, he went. He delivered them. And... What was the actual final punch which Narada used to deliver them? The final punch to deliver them. Narada knew I have convinced them, but they are stuck up with this Srila Shalinam. How can we disobey the orders of my father? My father told something. So how can I disobey my orders of the father? Then Narada, he tells, you know who is your father? What is this? Who is my? Scriptures of our fa are our father. Scriptures are our father. So this is where our problem comes. From goodness, how goodness is ignorance? Because in goodness, they want to become the scripture. I want to be the scripture. So I want to say certain good things. And replace myself with the scripture. So you tell, you speak scripture to them, and then uh, they would say, that, "That's all fine, but what I I say is also fine." If you go and ask them on the name of spirituality, they speak anything which comes to the mind, some good good things, and then they think this is scriptures. Like if you go and say. No, Bhagavad Gita, why don't you take this Bhagavad Gita? Bhagavad Gita, oh, both are chai, very good. What Krishna told in the Bhagavad Gita? Achhe raho. Jhut mat bolo. Standard things go on telling. Standard principles of morality. So, they go on telling. If there is no Bhagavad Gita, how can there be morality? All good things hmm, are spoken in the Bhagavad Gita. But they don't know what Krishna spoke. He did not spoke, he did not speak good thing there. He spoke something transcendental. So they think some words of morality are the final word of the scriptures. But Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Sarsit Thakur, he says morality is a glorified thing on the platform of delusion. Morality is a glorified asset on the platform of delusion. So, to think that being morally spiritual is a problem. That is why when you go to schools or colleges, they pay us the principal, everybody they want, they want that our children should be moral but not spiritual. And then, Swamiji, that this morality and spirituality the same. No, morality and spirituality is not the same. Morality is different, spirituality is different. So here, Dārada tells them, the real scripture, the real father is our scripture. And the father who actually engages their children in sense enjoyment, in the path of the pravrutti marga, is going against the scripture. Because the conclusion of the scripture is nivrutti, to how to get out of this world. Of course, if you want to simplify the subject matter is all the Vedas. There are only two subjects. How to live in this world and how to get out of this world. There are only two subject matters. And how to live in this world is also spoken in the Veda. And how to get out of this world is also spoken in the world, Veda. 
But how to get out of this world is uh, mentioned in the later part of the Vedas. That is Uttara Mimamsa. Uttara. Uttara means the later part. The Puru Mimamsa it talks about how to live in this world. So the Uttara part, part means the later part of the Veda. That is more important. That is Upanishads. So this quarrel between these two parts, followers of these two parts, Karma and Jnana or Vedanta, it has been right from the dawn of creation. That is the first thing which happened. That is Brahma and the four Kumaras. Brahma, he told, you live in this world very nicely. The Kumaras told, we want to get out of this world. Brahma became very angry. Of course, he could not show his anger. It came out in the form of Rudra. So, children not listening to the father and trying to become spiritual by giving up material life. It is not a new thing. And seeing those children who want to give up material life, the parents becoming angry is not a new thing. That has happened with Brahma. And that is the first incident that happened. So, during our time of preaching, when parents become very unhappy, become very angry when the children join, that's not a new thing. It's very normal. You don't have to be afraid about it. And it it has been there. It is it is there and it's going to be there in future also. In whatever may you may say, you may make any rules and regulations. You cannot change Prakriti. <laughs> Modes of nature or the rules of nature, law of nature cannot be changed. It is going to happen. It happened with everyone. Uh, whoever have joined this movement, do you think the parents were very happy about it? No, nobody was happy. They became very aggressive. The aggression, you, you have not seen that. You, was, you must have seen so many kinds of aggressions like that. The kind of uh, uh, aggression or that guilt or, or the lamentation they have. Why? What is the reason for it? Do you think they are so much attached to the children? That is why they are unhappy about it? No attachment. There is no attachment. Why? Why they are crying? Why they are lamenting? Here also you find why Daksha? Nasham Nishamya Putranam. Nishamya Putranam Narade Chila Shalinam. He became so much Anavat Taptya. His Tapta, he was become very Tapta means very miserable. What is the reason? Why, why become the parents become unhappy when they see their children joining his con or joining in the Brahmachari Ashram? What is the reason? The reason is not that they have concern and love for the child. The only reason is their hope of sense enjoyment through their children is lost. Daksha, he produced 10,000 children. What is the meaning of father? What is the relation between a father and a son? The son is the extended means of the sense enjoyment of the father. Actually, when the son enjoys, seeing the son enjoying, the father enjoys. See, it is he not enjoying, it is me enjoying through his body. So, when I see that my son is giving up enjoyment, is actually I giving up enjoyment, is actually sense enjoyment. How do you know this thing? First verse of Bhagavad Gita, the Trashu Vacha. Dharmakshetre, Kurukshetre, Samaveta, Yutsava, Mamaka, Pandava, Sheva, Kimakurata, Sanjaya. Once I spoke this, our Vishnaya Thakur's commentary and Baladevi Devashna commentary also, Prabhupada's commentary also on this verse, explained very deeply about many people, if you see the verse, you find that Rashtra was so much attached to his sons. Kimakuru to Sanjay, Sanjay, what happened to my son? Please tell, please tell. Are they, are they uh, being victorious or not? What, what is happening to them? Uh, Mamaka, my sons. But only Sanjaya could understand what's going in the heart of the Trashtra. Sanjaya understood in the heart of the Trashtra what is going on. Sanjaya knew the Trashtra was not concerned about their children are going to win or lose. The Trashtra was more concerned about whether his son is fighting or not. The Trashtra knew very well his sons are going to die. 
he knew perfectly well. Why? Because Dharma Kshetra, Kuru Kshetra, he is saying this is Dharma Kshetra. And he knew that his sons are on the side of Adharma. And he knew Krishna is God. The Trashtra knew it very well. Krishna is God. And he knew Krishna is on the side of Pandavas. And he knew very well Pandavas are going to be victorious and his children are going to die. If he is really attached to his children, what he should have told Duryodhana? Beta, come on. Mar jao. Isn't it? He should have told. Then come back. Wait, come on. Mar jao. But he was, he, he was not. He knew that Duryodhana is going to die. But still he asked Sanjaya, what is happening? Please tell me. Because he was afraid that being influenced by the Dharma Kshetra, कहीं मेरा पुत्र धार्मिक ना बन जाए <laughs> धर्म क्षेत्र के प्रभाव से मेरा पुत्र धार्मिक ना बन जाए बींग इंफ्लुएंस्ड बाय धर्म क्षेत्र वॉज अ फ्रेड दैट हिज सन वुड बिकम ए धार्मिका लाइक वेन ए मैन कम्स टू द टेम्पल स्टार्ट कमिंग टेम्पल क्वाइट ऑफ एन वाइफ इज वरी माई मे बी माई 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 हजबेंड मे बिकम ए डिवोटी माई हजबेंड मे बिकम रिनाउंस्ड May become a sannyasi. Huh? He was a drunkard. That is okay. <laughs> Being drunkard is okay, but no, 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 no. Do what you know. Let him be that one. No problem. Huh? He was drinking, coming and beating her every day. You no, know, being a big hangama. Somehow he came in touch with Krishna consciousness, and he started coming to the temple. She has another fear. This fear, my husband may leave me. Start crying. Hey, in your karma, crying is only there. What you can do? One cry, my son is horrible, my son, and other cry is, oh, he's going, he's going, he's joining his con. <laughs> so in your karma, crying is there. What you can do? Ultimately, crying is because of what? Because of your ignorance. Uh, so they have a problem with both. Uh, that is ignorance, goodness. If somebody is very ignorant, and then he, they are crying because oh, my son is like this, my son is like this. When he joins, and even my son is, we give back my son, give back my son. पहले से अच्छा, पहले अच्छा था, वो कैसे भी रहने दो, let him be. So here Duryodhana, the Rashtra, his concern was not his children. His concern was my sons should fight. At least for those eighteen days of the war, I will be on my throne. I will be on my throne. So it is the father. He sees the son has his own body. My body has become useless, but my son' body is actually my body. So when he enjoys, when he enjoys, I see me enjoying. It's very, very horrible, very cruel. Recently, one one father, the father came to me. And told, "Ah, we to my little girl has settled. Ho gaya hai. He was very happy about it. Then I told, 'I don't give more time. Now to Krishna consciousness, everything is over now. No, I got a great responsibility.' Then I told, 'What is the responsibility now? Your son is settled. Now I have to get him married.' She told, 'What? Uh, so getting him married, son, daughter, you should be worried about getting her married. <laughs> Why are you so worried about getting your son married?' No, no. I am very much worried about my son getting married. I told, "What is your problem? Getting married then?" So he doesn't want to marry. If he doesn't want to marry. Why it is your problem? <laughs> What is your problem? He doesn't want to marry. He doesn't want to marry. No, actually, the father wants to marry <laughs> through his son. <laughs> It's a fact, and that is known as responsibility. Just see how goodness covers the deep desire for sense enjoyment. Very dangerous. Actually, the truth of this world very difficult to accept. Kadua satya hai, satya kadua hai, or kadua satya hai. It is truth. The truth is bitter, uh, and bitter things are generally truth. 
It's a fact. Hmm. So he, this is what Daksha's problem is. Daksha thought, I have only one body. How much I can enjoy? So he produced 10,000. He was so much of, so happy that I can enjoy 10,000 times more. Just imagine how much he would be lamenting. Um, his all hopes of 10,000 times enjoyment is lost. He is not worried that my 10,000 children are somewhere in some ashram, maybe eating something, fruits, maybe they are. He is not worried about that. If you would have been worried about these 10,000 children are somewhere lost because of Narada in some uh, some ashram, they are getting proper food or not. If they are, if there is concerned about that, he would have not thought of producing another thousand. <laughs> Isn't it? Why he should think of producing another thousand? Rather, he produced another thousand. After that, when these another thousand also became brahmacharis, he was not even bothered about where the other thousand are there. He was bothered about, let me see. I will produce daughters. What Narada will do? Is it love? Ah, this is father's love for the child. At least he thought 10,000 have gone. At least go and meet them. Find out where they are. <laughs> Get them. <laughs> like these days when some boy joins the ashram. Meet, the father comes and camps in front of the <laughs> gate. And sits there only and get my son. <laughs> Daksha did not even do that. He was so expert. <laughs> he thought this Narada's preaching. Nothing is going to happen. He was so convinced about that. <laughs> he is so convinced that it is Narada preaching. Nah, I am going and trying to convince it is not going to happen. If it is somebody else preaching, then I would have done. <laughs> Some hope would have been there. It is Narada. <laughs> he knew the potential of Narada. So just see what love which the father has. Anyhow, I should not tell, but still I am telling you. <clears throat> my own story also. <laughs> it is good to tell. <clears throat> so when I joined, <clears throat> Uh, my father wrote a letter. Generally, every you must also experience this thing. Beta, you are so far away from our house. Uh, you want to become a devotee, you want to chant, you want to. We are not expecting anything from you. We will have a separate room for you. Come here, just be with us. And you worship, you do anything. Uh, you chant, you do your meditation. We have no expectation. We have enough money. We are not interested in your money at all. Uh, we, are, we are rich people. And. Uh, but be, be near me. Why all the way in Mumbai, thousand kilometers away? My situation is like that of Dasharatha. And you are like Ram. <laughs> I may leave my body in time. So, <laughs> I was, I read letter. But, oh, how, so much of love. <laughs> Where did it come from now? <laughs> because I remember the day when I got my job. Because we immediately after my college, we got a job. And uh, it is sure, it, job for, for us in Nurture Navy is that you have to be in the ship. Then I remember when I was going to catch my flight to go and then get the ship, join the ship. Then my father called all his friends, practically about 500 people came. He's a well-known person. And then he gave a big feast, big party to all his parents on the happy occasion of I getting a job. And he knew very well my job is in the ship. And that is 5,000 kilometers away. <laughs> that too in the middle of the ocean. <laughs> but I am living in Mumbai, having nice prasad two times a day. And there, oh, my horrible food. <laughs> Just imagine the dal they used to cook. I used to weed out the onion and eat. <laughs> and dal they put tadaka, na, onion tadaka, I weed out the onion and then somehow take it. So it was such a situation. And uh, how come he is loving me so much? <laughs> All of a sudden, where did he come from? Where did that love go? When I was in the middle of the ocean, the life is at risk, 5,000 kilometers away. Actually, there was no love. The whole party was not because I got a job, because he is thinking he got a job. <laughs> Through me. He got a job. 
And the whole purpose of uh, so much being happy, I being 5,000 kilometers away and uh, no proper food also and in the middle of the ocean just because I am earning money. Who is earning money? What is he thinking? And he is earning the money. My son's money is my money. Na? My son is mine. So, this is the truth of this world. There's, there is no, uh, no other way of thinking. It's a fact. So, Daksha is also saying, what is the, why he was suffering? Daksha's suffering is because of this reason. He lamented that my sons have become the cause of my misery. Why? Why they have become the cause of my misery? Because they have shattered my expectation. What is my expectation? My expectation is my enjoyment through them. Actually, why Daksha should be unhappy? Who gave sense enjoyment? Sons gave the sense enjoyment. He still has his own wife, children, all the big bell and everything. Na? Why? Why he should be upset? Because his expectation of 10,000 times sense enjoyment is lost. And he started thinking that good children are always a problem. Good children are always a problem. Any time anybody gives birth to a good child will become the cause of problems for others. So you should only give birth to horrible children. Give birth to Rakshasas. And these Rakshasas will always enjoy. So through them I can enjoy. So that is the thing. Huh? Those who have a destiny, those who are destined to suffer, will have good children. That is Daksha's realization. Those who are destined to suffer, they have good children. Like, to give you another very colloquial example, uh, those who are destined to suffer will get a good, good will get a good wife. Because good wife means she is chaste, she is not interested in parties and all these things. So, what kind of wife you are? So, just see, this goodness is a problem for the spiritualist also. And goodness is a problem for materialistic person also. So, goodness is like Trishanku. Unwanted mood in nature. <laughs> For those who want to say, those who want sense and joy, they say, hey, goodness, hey, hey, buddhu hai, sadhu. Then uh, the spiritualist says, you are totally in goodness. Why don't you surrender to Krishna? That's a problem. If you say surrender to Krishna, my mommy, papa, and he goes to mommy, papa, they say, hey, kaha ka nala hai tum? Dekho, dusre bachcho ko dekho. Ha? Kitna hai yashi kar rahe? <laughs> so in both cases is a problem. <laughs> they saying na, do bhi ka kuch na kar ka na ghat ka, na kar ka na ghat. So now to bring goodness in the society without spirituality is actually a futile endeavor. Even if you are able to bring goodness in the society without spirituality. I am telling you, you are making a useless person out of him. Because he will be neither useful for the material life nor spiritual. <laughs> nor spiritual. So, Narada was very expert. And that is why he was able to say, scriptures are your father. Huh. Scriptures are your father. That is why he speaks scriptures and add to the scriptures. Suprajattam Shochapadam Suprajattam He calls Shaucham Padam The cause of my lamentation is my own Supraja. Supraja. Supraja means good sons are the cause of my problem. So that is what Daksha is thinking. Now I will produce sons 
thousand of them, they will also be supraja. But they will only listen to me. That is what he thought. But the other set of sons were so good that Narada did not have to say anything to them. He just told, your uh, brothers, you are very affectionate to them. Just follow what they did. That's all. Yeah, that's the way. In this way, <coughs> Daksha's lamentation is described here and Narada's intelligence is also described here. So we stop here. Any questions please do ask. Hare Krishna Bhu. Thank you for your very bold class. Very much uh, relishing, relishable to Brahmacharis. I don't know what others. <laughs> Thank you very much, Mother. Uh, I want to know now, uh, because goodness you pointed out as a big problem. Many times when I go, I have been given this uh, topic, uh, rising from uh, passion and ignorance to goodness. So how do we, though I don't speak about mundane goodness, I speak about etiquettes, cleanliness, these are all related to, but how to uh, that thin line or how, could you please? Uh, Since it has been given to you, they are going to hear something from you. They are going to see you. So, though you may speak about goodness, they will get that goodness along with bhakti. So, that is why uh, only devotees, they should uh, speak about goodness. They should speak about any subject rather. Vaishnava should speak about all the subject matters. Because by speaking about all the subject matters, any subject matter, even if it's economic, political, Sri Prabhupada gives so much of political science in Nisha Upanishad. Even the economics talks about so much of economics. So when it is received through a Vaishnava, so all the subject matters, including, including uh, moral values, they are in its proper place, with proper understanding. So, we should do. That is why it is a great responsibility of the preachers of Krishna consciousness to practically uh, speak of all the subject matters. Because all these subject matters, when they are detailed with Krishna consciousness, pronunciation, they are all in its proper place. But if it is done by somebody, somebody who is not a Vaishnava, then it is not going to benefit anyone not going to benefit anyone. So, unfortunately, we are taking some values and uh, things etc. from, uh, from uh, other sources who are not Vaishnavas, who are not well read in the scriptures. Vaishnava is scriptures. So, if you take from some other sources, so there will be no goodness. Neither passion is only ignorance. That is why the more the society and uh, parents are endeavoring for uh, getting uh, the society proper, put them to proper moral values and all these things, they are, they are all are lost. So once one school principal teacher, she was telling that uh, why don't you come to the class, we give, you give some value education to us. I just went and after the entire class got out, it was 8th standard, ninth standard students. Class over, I thought. As long as you are going to have co-education, you cannot expect any goodness from anyone. They all become Rakshasas. It's impossible. Then you told, ah, true Prabhupada. Then I told, true means you stop then. <laughs> <laughs> so this is another problem. What is the problem? You are convinced, but you are not accepting. If you are true, that means you accept. Huh? That moral integrity is not there. When you are convinced, you should accept it. So this fight between the, the renunciation, path of renunciation, path of karma, is there right from the dawn of creation. Brahma and the four Kumaras. Then you have Hiranyakashibu and Rahalad. Uh, and uh, even if you see the recent times of uh, Shankaracharya having debate with Mandana Mishra, Andan Mishra is Purvi Mamsa, Hankaracharya is Uttarvi Mamsa, Vedanta. 
know what was at stakes? If Shankaracharya would be defeated by Mandana Mishra, Shankaracharya has to get married. And if Mandana Mishra would lose the debate, he should surrender and become a sannyasi. And who was the judge? Wife of Nandan Mishra, Bharati. Just imagine what kind of uh, culture people have. Uh, a lady. Naturally, she is attached to the husband. And uh, she is a judge, so she has to be neutral. And she declared Shankaracharya victorious. That means she lost her husband and he took, became, he became sannyasi. So this is going on, right? That is what Krishna in the Bhagavad Gita, he harmonizes. That is why Bhagavad Gita becomes very famous because in the Karmakanda section of the Vedas, you have bhoga, bhoga, bhoga. Dharma, Dharma, Dharma. And on the Uttarimamsa, the Upanishads, Tyaga, Tyaga, Tyaga. Vairagya, Vairagya, Vairagya. Now Krishna comes and then he harmonizes these two by putting bhakti in it. That is there in the Upanishad in a with a small glimpse of it. Ishashamidam sarvam yatkinchit jagatyam jagat tena tektena bunjaitam. This is tyaga and then bhoga. Tyaga bhoga samanya or bhoga tyaga samanya. And that is what Krishna does in the third chapter of the Bhagavad Gita, fifth chapter of the Bhagavad Gita. Bhoga tyaga samanya. <clears throat> Otherwise, this fight is going to be there. Even in our movement, in the initial days of Krishna consciousness, a set of grahastha, a set of sannyasis, they were also having tussle. Who should be the manager? And if you see Prabhupada's quote, they're all confusing. <laughs> sometimes this, sometimes this, sometimes they say, only sannyasi should manage. Sometimes they say, oh, only grahastha should manage. <laughs> so, even till today we find, huh? The set of brahmacharis and set of counselors, body, and they also fight. <laughs> Why? Because of lack of understanding of bhoga and tyaga. That is what Krishna, he harmonized in very interesting words. That is, akarmaya karma pasyet, karmani akarmaya ta buddhiman munasheshu. What is the meaning of these words? That one who sees karma in a karma, one who sees a karma in karma is buddhiman. To give you a very nice example, when a, Brahm, a grahastha sees a brahmachari, what is brahmachari doing? A karma is not doing any work. But this grahastha should see karma in his akarma. He has given his karma taking care of parents and all, for purpose of worshipping the deity. In, uh, so, in his akarma, what, you are, what the grahasa is supposed to see? Karma. Now, a brahmachari is seeing grahasa's karma. So, what grahasa is doing? Buying sabji, taking care of child, all these things. In his karma, you should see what? Akarma. He is getting sabji to offer, cook nicely and offer to the deity. It's like that. So, harmonization is done by Krishna. Uh, so, one who knows this harmony can actually present every subject matter. Otherwise, it's very difficult. Yeah. So, in that uh, connection only, this Tadara Jastamo Bhava Kama Loba Adeshi. So, this is different from uh, oh, different, different. because it is based on Nityam Bhagavat that Nityam we are Bhagavat Seva and person, person Bhagavat and book. That is, <clears throat> if you see. Tata Rajastamo Bhava Kamalo Bhava is Chetaiti Rana Vidham Sitam Satve Prasidati. What is that state of Sitam Satve? That is not Satoguna. It is Sitam Satve Prasidati. If you go and see the five verses starting from Srinvatam, these five verses talk about the nine stages of Bhakti. So Sitam Satve is what? Huh? Nish. Nice bhakti bhakti nice chikim. 
This is what next after Nishta is. Huh? Ruchi. And Ruchi is talking about Ruchi actually. Asakti. And then comes Bhava and Prema in the next verse. So it is nine levels of devotion. It is not talking about uh, the mundane uh, goodness. Many people, they, we quote this verse to use it for some how it's goodness. No. It's not. Yeah. Hare. Hare. Yeah, yeah. Hare. Prabhuji, you said uh, uh, that uh, parents love their children because they love, I mean, they feel that they are them on. They impose their personality on themselves, the children's personality on themselves. So, uh, yeah, uh, I just wanted to, I mean, again, this question of harmonization, like, uh, uh, it, when we think in that uh, terms, then our finer sentiments for, you know, in general uh, uh, are Perfect. lost. Uh, for any human being, what to speak of parents, like uh, uh, Prahlad was having finer sentiments for his father, Hirene Karsipu, he, even though he was not a, a good uh, person. So, uh, similarly, if some devotee comes and asks for some service and tells you will get the blessings of Krishna, we may think that actually he is not thinking about my benefit. He might thinking because his burden is lost. Then the finer sentiment of pleasing the Vaishnava is lost. If we really go into that much. Uh, so, uh, I wanted to know how that uh, harmonization. Nice question. Thing. Why? Because uh, also just one uh, small Fine. anecdote. Uh, like uh, Bhaktisiddhan Sarasar Thakur told his uh, one of the person who told that I did not cry because my wife died. So, he told that. Uh, he, uh, so, I give me sannyas. He told that. No, you go back because if you cannot cry for your uh, wife, then how can you cry for Krishna? That finer sentiment is lost. So, can you... Uh -huh. When Chaitanya Mahaprabhu started his South India tour, he was so attached to devotees and devotees were so attached. He thought that I can tell I am going to South India to all the devotees. They would cry, but I can convince them. But what about Saramatachari? He would never leave me. So he thought, let me tell lies to him. I am going to South India to find my brother. Sarmadachari, don't know which for some time, maybe a few more days, somehow the other. Very with a heavy heart, Sarmadachari accepted and Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is about to leave and is chanting, dancing and going to Alarnath. He did big kirtan there and is leaving. Sarmadachari is seeing Chaitanya Mahaprabhu leaving and he faints. At the time, Krishna Kaviradi Goswami says that Chaitanya Mahaprabhu did not even look behind. Then he says, Mahapurusha Sabhava is like that of a, is uh, has as hard as a Vajra, thunderbolt, and as soft as a flower. Both. Very difficult to understand. So, when you are supposed to be like soft like a flower towards spiritual sentiments, and how your heart should be to material sentiments as hard as a thunderbolt. So, this is where our heart should be hard, at the same time should be soft. Achintya, Bheda, Abheda, both should be there. To, towards what? We should be hard towards material sentiments. And towards what we should have? Spiritual sentiments. Soft. Bhakshan Thakur, he saw few of his Grasta disciples, they were saying, rejecting, giving even few coins to those beggars. Uh, same Bhakshan Thakur, I'm giving the example. <laughs> they are ganja, drinking ganja and all these things. And we are not supposed to do any social work. Uh, uh, this is all material. <laughs> Bhakshan Thakur advised his Grasta during Yatra, you keep few coins in your pocket and then give them. Because by doing so, your heart becomes soft. And also in the 11th canto, Krishna tells Suddhava, Muddha <coughs> Gita. The qualification of bhakti is what? Is that our heart should be neither too attached, it should neither too detached. So all these things are there. It should be neither. So in the scriptures, you'll find both. Uh, you, you show your the sentiments are the platform of truth. And what is that sentiment? You should show on the, show on the platform of the truth. That is Daya. <clears throat> One more example. Hmm. 
if you have studied that second chapter bhagavad gita sthitapagya <clears throat> in sthitapagya section <clears throat> 57 what is that verse 257 yah sarvatra namhisneha tat tat prayapya shubha shubham na abhinandati krishna clearly says don't tell thank you or sita pragna will never tell thank you abhinandan means what abhinandan means glorify tell thank you don't tell na abhinandati when somebody gives you some praise or some gifts don't tell thank you you should understand it is coming because of your karma tat tat prapya shubha na abhinandati prapya ashubham na dveshti when ashubha comes then shila balade vidya bhushan pur says how how can a person be like this is he a rock or what Huh? Is it hard? Hard is a rock or what? No, you substitute the sentiments with compassion. You are hard with compassion. So you don't say thank you, but you show compassion. It is not that the person has done some favor to you. You show compassion to the person, give some spiritual knowledge to him. Isn't it? Huh. So compassion is the basis of all the sentiments. and all the other sentiments all the other sentimental values whatever we have or the culture whatever you may say finer aspects you are talking about if that is not based on compassion all things are ignorance only if it is based on compassion all have their value again go with that drama now uh, 16 qualities were asked Aspin Samprathin Loke, who is that one person? Nara, Naram, he should be there, living, and he should be living now at the same time. Aspin Samprathin Loke, he should be Naram, he should be a human. Who has got these qualities? What qualities? Gunavan, Viryavan, Kojita Krodha, Atvavan, Driti. Sixteen qualities. Valmi ki as Narada. In the sixteen qualities, the first quality is one who is having qualities. Gunawan. Sorry, Gunawan means all gunas are come. Who is that Gunawan, Viryavan, Kojita Krodha, Ah, uh, Vashi, and all these things? They have sixteen qualities. Yes. Then, what is the meaning of Gunawan? Then, that guna which gives Gunavatta to all the gunas. And what is that? Daya, compassion. So that is the soul. Compassion is the soul of all the qualities. So, if you have compassion, genuine compassion, even anger becomes a glorified quality. Kojita krodha and passe vibhuti ka deva ha. Immediately, two words are used. One who has conquered anger immediately by seeing whom all the, even the demigods become very afraid. Two qualities were asked. Well, our Acharya has explained how is it so? Go to the crow, the hawar is conquered. Huh? So, based on compassion, anger is glorified. Without compassion, even the so-called charity, so-called love, is hatred. Actually, is anger. Okay, we we'll stop here. I don't know. You are not a good person. Okay. and uh, doing operation uh, so i'm very grateful my question is about uh, knowing the truth and accepting the truth yeah. so uh, i also in course of our practice we know the truths but there are some truths we are unable to accept fully so how do we fully accept the truths which are given actually what is what we can do But to give up this deep rooted selfishness which exists in this material world uh, that requires that is called actually strength and that is our weakness not accepting is weakness accepting is strength and that is called hridaya daurbhalya 
that is where krishna he told arjuna what did he say in the beginning chudram hriday daurbalyam tektva utishta parantapa he recognized do you think arjuna was not doing he was crying when speaking what does it mean i know what is the truth i know what you want to tell but still hear me ha <laughs> huh? i want to cry my truth <laughs> cry my ignorance out uh, so both are required that is you require a person who actually absorbs all your ignorance kachra whom you call it as a counselor at the same time who gives you the strength hridaya daur balya to get over this <clears throat> how how do you get the strength <clears throat> you get the strength from hearing from a strong person that is why hearing is required all the durbalata of the heart goes away then you accept the truth sarvam etadratam manne enma avadashi keshava i accept everything as truth what you said so that hriday durbalata has to be given up one of the four kinds of uh, anarthas is hridaya durbalya and what is that hridaya durbalya or the four aspects of hridaya durbalya putinati tuchha shakti ha huh? irsha is there the four are there matsarta matsarta there are four aspects of four things you have it in the uh, in vajan dhasya as well as madhurya kadambani four kinds of anarthas each anartha has got four four hriday go bahut balya tatva vibhrama asatrishna and uh, aparadha four kinds of in that there is one hriday dor balya in that tuchha shakti tuchha shakti means so you give up everything one thing <laughs> that is so insignificant that we come attached to that is why you require a sadhu who cuts that attachment and then make our heart strong to accept the truth it requires strength of the heart to accept the truth that was there naturally in people of the past that is why mandan mishra even mayavadis when they are defeated by madhvacharya they would just yes, yes it's true i'll become your disciple they did not think oh i have so many disciples what will they think and all this truth is truth we live for the truth that was the that of the people had this kind of character so people that that is why debates were fruitful during that time now you debate what is use there is no use of debating because if you debate even though he is defeated he will not accept it so don't debate chant <laughs> many people actually say why pro why, why? they they think i am a good asset for their for their debates <laughs> they don't mean to <laughs> make me a lawyer for that i don't know use <laughs> even if you tell convince defeat no 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 again they change the subject matter so that is why in kali yuga especially these days don't go for any debates one 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 young boy came and told me prabhu ji my brother is in brahma kumaris i want that i have debated with her um, i used all the logic in argument which you spoke in the classes proper books and all somehow i am not able to convince her so prabhu why don't you come and debate with my mother <laughs> debate with mother <laughs> i told no what do you want tell you want to defeat her you want to make her a devotee i want to make her a devotee then get defeated <laughs> <laughs> get def- get defeated he <laughs> she is your mother bhai <laughs> get defeated so if you are defeated then she thinks oh itna mera ladka itna janta hai she is glorified her, her son where did he learn all these things from so then he come to temple so yukti use yukti not debate so this is where compassion is there definitely we have finer sentiments but based on definitely what it takes just two words when some somebody invited for the they had this one shivratri they do a program political people were also there out of obligation i had to go 
So there are these uh, so many Dwadash Lingas and uh, some Brahma Kumari thing. Uh, one, <coughs> one elderly lady, she was explaining something. Then I just told her, uh, Shivji, who is it? And of over. What she knows about Lord Shiva? And she is trying to explain Lord Shiva. She became very embarrassed in front of everyone. I felt very bad. Then I told, okay, summer passed away and came back. They, no, no point in debating with people. Hare Krishna, because of Pradeh Dwarbalya. Shri Prabhupada ki jai, Grandrashtri Bhagatam ki jai.